Hey everybody, in this video, I'm going to explain how Russian words have gender. If you're new to foreign languages, this is going to be kind of an odd concept for you. At least it was for me, but it's really easy to learn. I'm going to explain what it is, why you need to learn it. I'm going to give you the endings to understand the different genders. I'm going to give you some of the major exceptions, and then I'll give you a little test at the end. The Vaichinachinyo. Всем привет, меня зовут Джерри, я делаю русский язык зиокин. Let's start with the what is gender. I mean, when I first started learning Russian, this was kind of an odd concept for me. I struggled to understand how can a table be masculine? It's it's not alive. How can it how can it have a gender? What you need to understand is that when we talk about gender in a grammatical term, in Russian it doesn't necessarily have the gender term that it does in English. So in English, gender means, you know, male or female. In Russian in grammatical terms, it's more just a group. You could kind of think of it as group one, group two, and group three. There's three genders in Russian, and we're going to get to those in just a minute. Now, I say that with a caveat because in Russian, the gender of the object, as we think about it in English, does come into play in a grammar sense in Russian. I'm going to get to those in exceptions, so don't worry about that right now. What you really need to understand is that there are three genders in the Russian language, and you can kind of think of them as just three separate groups, which are called masculine, feminine, and neuter. I'm going to give you a real high level. Why do you need to know this? What's so important about it? It's one of the very first grammar skills that you need to learn, and you're going to use it anytime that you speak Russian. The past tense of all verbs depends on the subject's gender. You're really going to need it when you talk about cases and the endings for the different cases in Russian. You're going to need it when you're talking about adjectives. You're often going to hear that adjectives have to agree in number, gender, and case. You see that gender there. And then you're going to need it when you're talking about personal pronouns. Even things as simple as eta has masculine, feminine, neuter. All right, let's jump in and talk about how to understand which words are masculine, which are feminine, and which are neuter. Before we get going, this video is going to assume that you know the Russian alphabet and that you know which letters of the alphabet are vowels. If you don't know that, I've got a video about the Russian alphabet, which I'll link right here. And then I've got a separate video which talks about the vowels, which I'll link right here. You're going to need to know those for this video to make sense. You can tell if a word is masculine, feminine, or neuter by their endings, by the ending letter there. So words ending in a consonant or any kratkoi are masculine. So let's take, for example, stool, a chair. You can see here that it ends in an L. That's a consonant. So we know that stool is masculine. If we take chai, which is T, we see this ends in an ikratkoi, and we know that any word ending in a consonant or an ikratkoi is masculine. So chai is masculine. Feminine words end in an A, ya or myakiznak, the soft sign. So if we took the word kniga, which is book, we see here that it ends in an a. It's not a consonant, it's not any kratkoi, but it's an a, so we know that it's feminine. If we take the word semya, family, we see here that it ends in a ya. That's one of our trigger words to know that it's a feminine word. And then if we look at nuch, this one ends in the soft sign, and we know that soft sign means that it's a feminine word. Now, stay around for the exceptions because this one gets a little tricky and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, the last category or the last quote-unquote gender is neuter. And words ending in the letters O or Y are neuter. So if we take the example sonsia, sun, we see that this ends in a Y, so that indicates that it's a neuter word. The word slova means word. It ends in an O, so we know that it is a neuter word. Unfortunately, it's not as black and white as I have presented it here. That's a good foundation. It's a good place to start. And I would say that that holds true in most cases. But as in everything else in Russian and even in English language, there are exceptions. So if you're just guessing or you're just betting and you don't know, bet with one of those endings that I just gave you. The biggest caveat or the big biggest exception there is going to be the soft sign, the myakiznak. A lot of words that end in the myakiznak are actually masculine and not feminine. Again, if you're unsure, 
go with the feminine because about 75% of the words that end in a miyakisnak are feminine. The other 25% are, but 25% is kind of a big number. So you do run into a lot of words ending in miyakisnak that are masculine. What you'll want to do is as you're learning new nouns in Russian, you're going to want to learn the gender of the noun along with its meaning. The way that I like to approach that is I like to memorize the exceptions rather than every single one. So if I take a new word like stakan, for example, that means cup, and I'm memorizing and it's new to me, I first see that, okay, it ends in a consonant, so it should be masculine. And as I'm learning, I see, okay, it is masculine. So I don't need to learn anything special about that. And I just move on. I don't memorize this gender. I just memorize the ones that are a little bit different. And for some reason, that method seems to work for me. I hope it'll work for you too. All right. So I want to give you some exceptions and there's a, a lot of them. I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm just going to give you kind of the, the biggest ones that you're going to find early on in your Russian learning career there, if you will. And they're mostly family related. So if we take the word Papa, for example, it means dad, just like it sounds, Papa. And it ends in an ah. So by the rules that I gave you, this should be a feminine word, but it's not. It's masculine. And this is kind of where it goes back to the beginning of the video when I was talking about how gender doesn't really come into play in words. It's more just three categories. Well, in this case, the actual gender of the noun, Papa, is a man, right? That is a masculine, quote unquote, masculine person or word. And so this word, even though it ends in an ah, is a masculine word. Same with these next few. Dyadya, uncle, ends in a ya, quote unquote, should be feminine, but is masculine. Dyadushka, grandpa. Mushina, man. And then kofi, it ends in a ya. We would likely think that that's a neuter word, but it's actually masculine. Those are just some of the exceptions. They're not all of them, but they are very common, especially for those people just learning Russian. So I thought I would call them out here. You guys, my goal is to teach you how to speak in Russian freely without tried memorized phrases or pre-memorized conversational dialogue. So if you're really interested in learning Russian, subscribe to this channel. I put out two videos every week. All right, let's do a quick little test here to see how much you remember. I'm going to put the words up on the screen. I'll give you the meaning and I'm going to spell them out. And then you guess the gender, masculine, feminine, neuter. And the first one is vapros. Question, vapros, masculine, gazeta, feminine, muisol, feminine, moria, neuter, historia, feminine, drug, masculine, boy, masculine. Dyadya, masculine. Now, this is one of the trick words, right? It's uncle. So it's, even though it ends in a ya, it's masculine because the person that it's actually talking about is quote unquote masculine. Komnata, feminine. Mir, masculine. Nos, masculine. Utra, Neuter, vada, feminine, zub, masculine, shastya, neuter. Okay, how many of those did you get right? Is it a pretty easy concept? Are you already kind of halfway there? It's just a few little letters to know and how they get categorized. Not a hugely hard concept. Ну хорошо, тогда это все. Спасибо и увидимся.